Hello, my name is Michael DeMarco. I'm a second year student at the University of British Columbia. I'm studying computer science. I wanted to make this video to very quickly, hopefully, cover 10 tips I would tell myself a year ago today if I was looking to get into the major. Um, now, with everything being online, I know it can be like hard to find resources and things. So yeah, I just want to put this like all in one video. Also, I'm just going to leave them on the screen. So if you want to just like see them and then leave, it's fine. I'm not like looking to become a YouTuber. It's just some advice that I think is useful. Um, so the first one is to take CPSC 110 and don't take CPSC 103 and then 107. So there are two ways to enter the major. You can take 110 directly and then you're like good to go. Or you can take 103 and then 107. Um, I really think you should do the former because um, it's just designed for people who have never done programming before. It's a fantastic course with a lot of fantastic professors. Um, I don't like 107 is almost the same as 110. So I don't really think you gain a lot from taking it across six credits instead of just regular three. So yeah, if you can, just take 110. Um, if you really want to learn Python, I guess taking 103 is okay, but no, nah, I think for the most people, just taking 110 is more than fine. Uh, my second point is to take uh, CPSC 121 and 110 in different semesters. Do not do them at the same time, uh, but do take CPSC 210. So what this translates into is I recommend taking CPSC 110 in first semester and then 121 and 210 in second. Um, the biggest reason for this is just that 110 and 121 are both a bit nasty and like they're, they're challenging courses. So um, you should take 110 first, deal with that, it's a hard course. Um, and you also have to take like Math 100 and things um, or whatever math course you choose to take. I'll get on that, <laughs> touch on that more later. Um, but in second semester, you'll have a bit of experience behind you. And also if by some chance you uh, did high school programming, then typically I've seen it done in Java. That's like, I think like kind of a standard. And 210 is also in Java. So that makes things uh, a whole heck of a lot easier if you already know the programming language. So yeah, taking 121, 210 second semester, that's just making your life a lot easier. Um, my third point is to not take <coughs> engineering math unless you've already done a lot of calculus. So there's three math streams at UBC. There is 100 and 101, which is engineering, 102 and 103, which is life science, and 103 and 104, which is economics, um, or like business kids, I guess, like snakes. Um, so don't take the 101, uh, 100, 101 stream if you can avoid it. Um, these courses, it's not advertised anywhere, but they have a way higher lean on the grading scheme towards midterm and final. Like you're basically your entire grade is decided by the final. Um, for most people, this is not a good way to learn. It's really not a good way to learn in general. If you're like, for whatever reason, you like have done all of calculus already, then yeah, take 100 because it'll, you won't have to do any work. There's like ba barely any homework. Um, and then you can just like walk into the exam, ace and leave. But for the rest of us, like we can't do that. So take 102 or 104 and you'll thank yourself later. Um, point number four is to find balance in your semester. So just like across your two terms, make sure you take like equal difficulty courses in some across both. So that's I, or the earlier point about 110, then 121 and 210 is good. Um, yeah, if you're taking like physics at some point, like put it in the semester that you think is easier so that you can keep some sort of balance. And then the other point is to find balance in like the time you start during the day, like what time you have to roll out of bed and attend lecture. Um, if you have a schedule where like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're starting at 8 a.m. every day and then Thursday or Tuesday, Thursday, you're like 5 p.m., your life is going to suck with that sort of variability. So even if it's consistently early, like, okay, 8 a.m. is pretty bad, but if you can do like 9 a.m., that's okay. If it's consistently late, that's also fine if it's like 5 p.m. every day. But as long as it's consistent, that's the biggest thing. You'll really thank yourself for that one. Uh, the fifth point is to like attend a hackathon or do some sort of learning outside the classroom. So I was fortunate enough to join a club called Code the Change. Um, you basically just build a an app for a nonprofit from start to finish throughout the year. I got tons of great mentorship and met lots of awesome people. Learned some extremely valuable things that like led to you know my current internship and things like that. So. It's essential that you do some kind of learning outside the classroom. Code the Change is a bit of an extreme example. I was super lucky to get on that. Um, even just like attending a hackathon or something is a great way to just like pick up some skills, put that on your resume, and like keep going. Don't rely on the classroom to teach you everything you need to know. That's just not how it works. Um, the sixth one is apply to internships. So I, you know, as a first year, I was like, what, like apply to internships? Like I'm just trying to get in the major. Like what are you talking about? But there's actually a lot of programs these days that are designed for first years. So Google has one called Step. Microsoft has one called Explore. They're all really well ran and like great learning experiences. So apply, apply, apply. Even at places that aren't like first year programs, just apply anyway. You never know what'll happen. In the best case, you get a job. In the worst case, you get lots of great interview prep, which is huge. It's absolutely essential for a co-op. 
Uh, I guess the seventh point is to attend office hours, especially if you're interested in like research or like grad school or something. But even if you're not, just getting to know like professors and stuff is such a like a like underdone thing that first years do. So yeah, just like go to office hours, meet professors, talk to them, get to know them. It, you're just doing yourself a favor. Um, this kind of relates to the last point is like try to be a TA if you can. It's like the best. In my I'm heavily biased because I I am am and was a TA. Um, but I think TA is the best part-time job you can have as an undergrad. It's a fantastic way to like engage with the material. You like see it in a whole different light. Um, you get to work with professors like alongside them, so it makes it way easier to go to office hours. You feel like way less awkward because you like you're like professors are people too. It's like a hard message to hear, but it's true. Um, and it's like can be really intimidating at first. Like these people are so venerated and have done all this research. So TAing is a great way to like sort of shake off the the pressure um, of asking like only smart questions or something. I don't know. Um, so yeah, attend office hours uh, if at all possible, and then yeah, try to become a TA. There's a CS application, and you can TA as a first year. So I'm living proof. Um, the ninth point is to take courses you enjoy, not just easy courses. So so many people just take you know grade boosters because like Reddit told them to or something. I don't know. Um, don't do that. It's bad advice. Take courses you enjoy because those just naturally become great boosters. So I was like kind of curious about linguistics. I had heard of this thing called natural language processing, which even if you have no idea what it is, it's just like language. You know, you're like, okay, linguistics sounds cool. Um, I took Ling 100. It was an absolute gem of a course. I loved every second. If linguistics is not really your jam, it's not going to be a great booster for you. If you're interested, it'll be a great booster like every other course. You know, if you're passionate about computer science, you'll find yourself naturally wanting to study for the course and won't be you won't have to like grind your teeth to like you know open your textbook or whatever so which is a great way to like make your life a lot easier is take courses you enjoy you're also paying for them like people forget that a lot you pay 550 dollars per course you take in science so make them count uh the 10th and final point is to be social and get involved this is huge advice for this year because um everybody's online like it's gonna be super weird it's gonna be a lot harder to like meet people in lecture and stuff so Go like join a club in whatever form that looks like. Go to an event, like do those kinds of things, because you you need to network to get through first year, absolutely. And so yeah, just put yourself out there, and it'll pay you tons of favors. Um, okay, so that was about all I had for advice. Uh, maybe at some point I'll do one for like just UBC first year, but this was like going from you know your first day at UBC to hopefully computer science. This is the advice um, I would give myself. If I could go back. Hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, yeah, good luck with everything, UBC.